This is Land of Havilah, Proverbs 3b. Coming in the next five verses, wisdom and understanding give seven to twelve benefits depending on how we count them. Verse 13. Happy is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gets understanding. For her good profit is better than getting silver, and her return is better than fine gold. She's more precious than rubies. None of the things you can desire are to be compared to her. Length of days is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. All her paths are peace. She's a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Happy is everyone who retains her. Comment wisdom and understanding make a man happy, give him profit, are better and more precious than silver, gold, and rubies, are the most desirable things possible, give length of days, which is long life, give riches, honor, are pleasant, give peace, give life, and give happiness. Every outcome of wisdom and understanding is good. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and understanding in verse 13. Now more about the wonders of them, verse 19. By wisdom Yahweh founded the earth. By understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths were broken up and the skies dropped down the dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so there'll be life to your soul and grace for your neck. Then you shall walk in your way securely. Your foot won't stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you'll lie down, and your sleep will be sweet. Don't be afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it comes. For Yahweh will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being taken comment in verse 21, that word discretion popped up again, which is the ability to detect subtle differences or to appreciate nuance, therefore to have situational awareness. The thing Solomon's been driving at since the first verse of this book, the thing he keeps begging us to acquire, he's describing by four words as he goes along, as they're translated here, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and discretion. And he says they come from acknowledging God. In verses 19 to 20, we just read, God's the master and source of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. So what, he's really, what Solomon is really describing is the ability to think about things the way God thinks about them, to tap into the mind of God. But it's not so mystical. It's pretty basic, such as in the coming verses, verse 27. Don't withhold good from those to whom it is due when it's in the power of your hand to do it. Don't say to your neighbor, go and come again tomorrow, I'll give it to you, when you have it with you. Comment, if it's due, it's due. Now's the time to pay it if you have it. Don't say you'll pay it tomorrow. It's time to go ahead and say that good thing to someone that you know you should say. Go ahead and thank them if you owe them thanks. Whatever good that's in your hand, Whatever good that's due from you, be quick to perform it. Now for some rapid-fire proverbs from one subject to another. Again, nothing mysterious, just basic stuff that'll serve us well. Verse 29. Don't devise evil, evil against your neighbor since he dwells securely by you. Don't strive with a man without cause if he has done you no harm. Comment, don't strive with a man for no reason, meaning don't pick a fight with him. Verse 31, don't envy the man of violence. Choose none of his ways, for the perverse is an abomination to Yahweh, but his friendship is with the upright. Coming to be perverse means to have twisted morals. An abomination means an outrage. So it says twisted morals are an outrage to God, but he's a friend to the upright. Verse 33, Yahweh's curse is in the house of the wicked, but he blesses the habitation of the righteous. Comment is basic. God curses the wicked and blesses the righteous. If anyone has a problem with that, just be advised that that's exactly what he said. Yahweh's curse is in the house of the wicked. It's not that God's vindictive. He'd bless everyone if it was possible. He's not wishing for anyone to perish, 2 Peter 3.9. He's kind to the just and unjust, Matthew 5, 45. But if a person goes down the route of wickedness, 
what happens to that person from God is on that person. Speaking of God, verse 34, Surely he mocks the mockers, but he gives grace to the humble. The wise will inherit glory, but shame will be the promotion of fools. Come at shame will be the promotion of fools isn't very clear at first. It's something like, if you mock God, you'll be shamed, but the wise inherit glory. It's all simple to someone who fears God, not based on IQ, but based on the conviction that simply doing the right thing is the wisest course. But we don't know the right thing unless there is the fear of the Lord. There may even be a veil of deception and complete reversal in our minds of what's right and wrong. We've seen a lot of that in public life lately. One of the major political parties in the U.S. has recently dropped any mention of God from its platform, and there's not the slightest sense in them anymore of what's right and wrong. It's uncanny how consistently blind they are to right and wrong on basic moral issues. Not that the other party fears God and gets it right, but occasionally they do. Proverbs 4 is next.